All righty. Welcome, everybody. My name is Corbin. I am the undergraduate enrollment advisor, and uh, we are here tonight to talk about the criminal justice program here in our college at the University of Cincinnati. Uh, so like I said, my name is Corbin. I will be your host. Uh, I'm the undergraduate enrollment advisor in the College of Education, Criminal Justice, Human Services, and Information Technology here at the University of Cincinnati. So really excited to be here tonight, highlighting this program and letting you hear from some of the individuals within the program. And uh, right now I want to introduce some of those individuals. First, uh, we do have a faculty panelist. So Sue Burke, actually program coordinator of the criminal justice program. Sue, thank you so much uh, for being here tonight. Can you hear me, Sue? Yep. Okay. I'm yeah. here. All right. Thank you so much for being here. You want to introduce, introduce yourself real quick? Well, I'm Sue Burke. I've been teaching at UC in the criminal justice program for 30 years, and I am the uh, program coordinator and absolutely love our criminal justice program and teaching in the program. All right. Thank you. And then we did a few students here tonight. Um, students, do you guys want to introduce yourselves real quick as well? Let me unmute you guys. Hey, I think we have Emily. Emily, are you here tonight? Can you hear me? Might be having some audio issues. Emma, how about you? Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Emma, you want to introduce yourself real quick? Okay. Um, my name is Emma Spalding, and um, I'm a junior uh, in the criminal justice program with a minor in forensic populations. Okay. Thank you. And I know Lauren will be joining us shortly. She's actually in class right now, uh, so she will be joining us once she gets done with that. Uh, and then Emily, um, I think she was having some technical difficulties with her audio, so Emily Simmons uh, is another one of our students here as well in the program and will be joining us hopefully fairly shortly. So first of all, I just want to say congratulations students for, you know, it, for those of you that have applied to the university, been admitted to UC this fall, really excited to have you and that you are considering UC as a place to kind of call home and, and a next step for you in your, in your journey. So very excited to have you here. Hey, Emily, can you hear us now? No, I can't hear you. <laughs> uh, oh, there you are. It's working? It's working now. Okay. Awesome. So just introduce myself. Yeah. Right. I'm Emily. I'm a fourth year criminal justice major. I'll be graduating this upcoming spring. Um, yeah, I'm from Dayton, Ohio. So I All don't right. know. Thanks. Yeah, you're good. Thanks, Emily. That's perfect. Uh, but like I said, congratulations, students, um, and anyone else that's just looking into the program here at UC. You know, hopefully, thanks for being here tonight. And, um, and hopefully we can help answer some questions, give you some more information and, and just an opportunity to hear from some of the individuals within our program here at UC. Just to kind of give you a brief overview, we are uh, going to keep it pretty simple and trying to talk about the stuff that you really want to hear and know. Uh, so focusing on just a little bit of an overview of the program, letting you hear from Sue, talking about the criminal justice program and even some of the students. And then we'll kind of go into life as a student and letting them share about what that looks like for them and in the day-to-day. -day. I know right now campus life looks a little bit different than maybe what they were expecting it to look like, uh, but we're adapting and we're going with the flow. And uh, then we'll definitely have some time for Q&A as well. So if you have questions, feel free to post those in the chat box. We will address those either throughout the presentation or uh, depending on the question, we can save them to the end and making sure we'll get to all the questions on there uh, before the end of this presentation. Uh, so just program overview first, talking about the criminal justice program here at UC. And this is kind of where I'm going to turn it over to Sue Burke, professor and program coordinator of the program, and let her talk a little bit about uh, this program and, and what she does on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, good evening, everybody. <clears throat> I hope everybody's uh, safe and healthy and enjoying the time at home. Um, I think we have an absolutely world-class um, faculty. We are ranked number three in the country by U.S. News and World Report, um, and we have 26 of uh, the best faculty. They are experts in their fields. 
We have faculty that uh, research things from uh, policing to victimology to criminology, um, human trafficking, um, cybersecurity, so many different things. And so the faculty um, actually, you know, who teach the programs, um, Am I on? Yeah, you're good. I, just turned off, I turned off the videos. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, you know, that's who's the, that, that who's, who is teaching our courses. And um, we have an undergraduate research program that also allows students to work with the faculty on different research projects. Our faculty uh, provide advice uh, to international leaders about policing, about corrections, about prisons, jails, best practices and policing. Um, and very approachable. Uh, you know, I'll let the students talk about them later, but, you know, in my opinion, our faculty are world class and um, work well with students. We, one of the, the um, highlights, I think, of our program is that we do require an internship. Every senior has to complete an internship. So um, they spend 112 hours during a semester out with an internship. And our students have found some wonderful internships from police departments. We have students doing internships with the Secret Service, the DEA, the FBI, uh, local law enforcement. We have um, uh, students working with offenders, with probation and parole. We have um, students doing some uh, wonderful things with our local court system, with the prosecutor's office, public defender's offices in their internships. We also have students doing um, internships uh, with the business sector. That's a big part of criminal justice today, corporate security, assets protection, um, player security, event security. So there's so many things within the business sector. And we have connections to all of these different agencies and businesses where students can do internships. Um, we have a big career fair every year. Emma can talk about that. She was instrumental in our career expo this year. We had about 70 criminal justice employers come to campus on March the 3rd. Um, and they talked about their agencies, they talked to students about internships, about jobs, how to prepare for careers, and all these different kinds of jobs. Um, we um, have one of the, the we have a very um, active student organization called the Criminal Justice Society, the CJ Society, and these students actually prepared and planned the, the career fair. We also, um, have undergraduate research, like I mentioned earlier, where students can actually participate with faculty um, in, the, um, in their different research projects. So I think that's a, a probably a pretty good overview of things. And if students have questions for me later, I'd sure be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, a lot of resources and opportunities for students within this program. Um, and maybe uh, Emma and any of you uh, were involved in the Career Expo that just happened. Anyone want to talk about that and the importance of the Career Expo? Um, hi, I'm Lauren. Um, so as a student going to the Career Expo, I just wanted to say like that is a great resource that I really appreciated that we had. It lined me up with an opportunity with River City Correctional Center that I have a job as um, a residential advisor for this coming August to work with them. And their residential advisors are just like a correctional officer. So I'm really great to do that later this year. Okay, great. Yeah, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, so again, I'm Emily and so I've been going to the Career Expo for um, my first year to my fourth year. And every time it's been um, a phenomenal experience. As Sue said, there's over 70 companies that come and um, every year I've gotten experience to work over the summer to do something. So for example, I worked as a player security officer at a professional tennis tournament here in Cincinnati. And I got to um, literally work within security and walk around different professional tennis players. And that was a real passion of mine. So that was cool. And I've gotten to work in other areas such as rehabilitation and um, working with reoffenders, working with offenders with rehabilitation at Talbert House, which is also located in Cincinnati. Great. 
Um, I did get a question. We're talking about um, the internship piece of this program. Are students able to do more than one internship in this program? Yes. So, for example, I'm a fourth year, and by my second year, I already had two experiences. So one is required. Um, it is 112 hours. It's a course that you take to complete it. But I always tell students to do more than one. You know, I'm on my third now, and it just suits you up better for when you graduate. So it shows that you have different experiences. So yes, you definitely can. It's just a matter of you reaching out and getting those contacts. Okay. Yeah. And so for those of you that have a, have had internships, why don't you guys each kind of share briefly what those internships were? And we start with you, Emily. Okay, yeah, so um, I was currently at Talbert House. That was for my senior internship. Unfortunately, with the circumstances of UC being closed, I cannot continue working there, but I got some hours. And what I was doing there was um, helping out in any way I could within rehabilitation. So I followed the main supervisor and I got to hold group meetings for about five offenders per group. And this is where we just talked about ways to have corrective thinking. So I really applied what I learned in class my sophomore year of college and did that all the way into my senior year. So it's really cool seeing that aspect translate into what I learned to actually incorporating that into my work. So um, kind of different direction that I took than I expected, but I'm really enjoying it. I really enjoyed it so far. Emma or Lauren, either of you have anything to talk about with internship experiences? Um, so mine's a little bit different for internship-wise. Um, as um, Dr. Bork said earlier that about the advanced um, field placement with research, that is um, the requirement that I'm doing to for my research. So we have to do 100 hours of research and um, they set you up with a person of your interest. So currently I am helping with white collar crime and I um, typically we have a like big sh um, scholarly showcase that we present at the end of the spring but since with campus closing we're doing it online so I'm making a case study um, and I will be having a poster for it and I'll get to post it online and like that would be my first like publicly like scholarly thing that I can have on like my CV and everything like that. And you learn more things of like, just how to get into grad school and all more like educational things, but still learning about the different ways of how to get into like contact with offenders and things like that. Okay, thank you. How about you, Emma? Um. I haven't like done um, my internship yet. I was going to start this semester with Dr. Smith, um, like working with kids at a rehabilitation center. But since UC and everything um, shut down, I didn't get to, but it is, I don't want to say like easy, but it's not um, as hard as like other schools to get internships just because I feel like all the professors and faculty at UC work really hard to make connections and they definitely know everybody and everybody's willing to help you get an internship in your interest. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, I did get a question. So if you have students in this program, are any students in this program have an interest in cybersecurity? Do we have students interested? Mm -hmm. Currently, I am in a cybersecurity, um, like, internship kind of program, you could say. Um, UC is paying um, us to have this course through IQ4, and we are working with cybersecurity um, professionals, and we're put into little groups, and we have, like, a different case study for each group of, like, that we need to consult on. Um, currently, I'm doing espionage, and this is our first week doing it. Um, so far, I love it, and it's a great thing, and we'll have this, like, knowledge of, like, going on forward, and we have all these contacts, so that's just good stepping stone that UC provides different things. Um, I know there was a cybersecurity certificate that they were talking about as well that we're um, allowed to mm -hmm. get if we would want. 
Um, I'm not very knowledgeable, but that's all I know so far. Okay. Yeah, no problem. I think it was just a curious, like if someone were to be in this program that might have an interest in cybersecurity careers, but depending on, you know, how involved you want to be with the IT side, but maybe some students that might be in criminal justice and how you could combine cybersecurity. Well, we have the certificate in the foundations of cybersecurity. So uh, we have a, a good um, uh, program where we have meshed together the IT program and the criminal justice program and students can get that certificate. We also have a certificate in crime and intelligence analysis for uh, students that would like to do, uh, you know, a, be a crime analyst or something like that. So we have a wonderful IT program in that IT program combined with um, our criminal justice program opens doors into cybersecurity and a ton of really good jobs upon graduation. Um, one question was about the internship piece. Uh, you know, obviously some internships, <clears throat> most internships are typically unpaid, uh, but are, are there any students that have been able to take advantage of any kind of paid internship experiences? Yes, yes. So, um, oh, go ahead. No, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to you, go ahead. Okay, so yeah, they can. Um, some are unpaid, but you can search out ones that are paid. So for one of my three experiences, I had one that was paid hourly, and that's just a matter of really who you're working for and what kind of job you're doing. So um, internships typically are unpaid, but you can definitely seek out paid ones. It's just a matter of uh, where you're working for, really. So my paid one was when I worked for Fifth Third Bank, downtown Cincinnati, and I was um, an off-scale security officer there. So I worked at their security department and I got paid for that position. Perfect, yeah, we have students do that and they really get a good experience with that. Um, we have students currently that are getting paid and doing an internship with the Secret Service. We have a Cincinnati office uh, of the Secret Service and they hire interns to work there. So we have that. Um, I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, we, we have the um, uh, the business sector, which I like to you know talk a lot about because I don't think a lot of people realize that there's global security, corporate security, and they hire. We have a number of students who have done internships with TJ Maxx, Talbert House. Uh, I mean, not Talbert House, but Target, um, Kohl's, and they get paid while they're doing their internship. Um, and the business sector really offers opportunities like um, trips to their corporate uh, headquarters. Uh, another student got to go on an all expense paid trip to Chicago to meet the um, organized crime task force in assets protection. So um, yes, uh, insurance companies also offer internships. Um, you know, nationwide, different um, insurance agencies offer within their insurance fraud investigations will offer paid internships. So yes, but most of the um, governmental sectors like police departments, prisons, jails, sheriff's departments, they just don't have the money to pay interns, but they give a world of experience. They give great experience. Um, and we, ought, we can offer college credit for internships too. So if you don't get paid, you get college credit, which could also be a nice little um, bonus to doing an internship. Yeah, great. Those are great responses. I think hopefully that answered the question. <laughs> um, and so let's uh, kind of move on here a little bit and we can definitely come back to some things. Um, but I want to kind of go into the curriculum of this program. And so this program is so flexible uh, because students really tailor this degree to what it is that they want to do within criminal justice and this is just kind of shows you kind of how the curriculum is broken up into this program and where students are taking what you can see you have your general education requirements that all students take specific kind of elective hours and the math course and other areas and like social and ethical issues and stuff like that and then you'll have your criminal justice major requirements those are the courses that everybody takes in the program. Uh, you do have 18 hours towards a, a minor or a certificate or some sort of a focus area. And then you'll see what's, what's called criminal justice 
upper level electives or just criminal justice electives where students take courses from different areas like criminal justice, criminology, corrections and policing, some of those key areas within the program. Uh, so I'm gonna let you guys maybe uh, starting with Professor Burke and then students sharing a little bit about how you are structuring your program and what are some of the courses that you've taken or Professor Burke, what are some of the courses that you specifically teach and prepare students for, especially yeah. in their first year? I think Corbin, you said it really well when you said we're flexible and we have those eight courses that are required um, of all students to kind of give everybody a taste of different things like criminal justice, criminology, policing, corrections. Then the students get to pick 30 hours of, um, of courses that they just want to take, electives. Um, so um, they can pick, you know, we have a whole curriculum for uh, law enforcement and policing. We have a whole curriculum for corrections and working with criminal offenders like probation and parole. We have a whole criminology uh, curriculum. How, you know, how, why do criminals commit crimes? Uh, what, what causes criminals to be criminals? The criminology piece. Then we have the um, straight criminal justice track where somebody might want to go into law school, work for the court system, and they would take that track. But students get to pick, it's like the cafeteria plan, where students can actually pick the courses that they want to take. We assume that students have an idea where they want to go, you know, what kind of criminal justice job they'd like to get. So we let them pick their own courses. Uh, we do require a minor, a certificate, or a focus area. And again, those are, um, 18 hours of, um, of courses that students, uh, say they wanna take Spanish, they wanna go into a career that uh, Spanish would be helpful, um, finance, uh, accounting, uh, the uh, cyber crime, uh, the crime and intelligence analysis. We let students pick what they wanna do um, because they know the career path that they'd like to take. So we're, they're very flexible. I personally, have taught most of the corrections courses. Before I was a professor, I actually worked for 12 years in the community. I worked with juvenile delinquents and I worked with the police, I worked with the courts, I worked one-on-one -on -one with uh, juvenile offenders as a probation officer. So I have experience in the corrections area and taught most of those courses. Uh, we have uh, professors that you know, teach the um, uh, policing, the law enforcement courses, because they've had experiences or done research with uh, law enforcement and policing. Uh, victimology is another uh, area that the students like to take courses. Uh, so again, a great deal of flexibility. Students get to pick their courses, pick their minor. Um, oftentimes students will double major. We offer, we, um, the students can take free electives and so with those free electives, oftentimes they can double major in something like double major in psychology, double major in Spanish. Um, there are lots of, uh, uh, you know, classes that, that, you know, students might want to do a double major instead of a minor. So we're just that flexible and they still graduate on time or even early, depending if they come in with uh, uh, career courses or AP classes. Uh, we accept all those things and help them build their major and maybe graduate early. I don't know if the students want to talk about some of their classes now, Emily or Emma yeah. or Lauren. To kind of go off what you were just talking about with double majoring, it's really easy to do so within this major because it is so flexible and a lot of the classes can double dip, so to speak, which means that one class can count towards your major and your minor. So for example, my major is criminal justice, but I have three minors within psychology and then two are technically certificates of forensic populations and correctional rehabilitation. So um, again, really flexible. I'm still graduating within four years. I could have even graduated earlier, but you can, if you really know what you want to do and um, there's a lot of flexibility for adding on those extra things to your resume really, so. Yeah, going off with like criminal justice is so like like flexible. I I have I'm majored with criminal justice. I majored in psychology, and then I also have a certificate in correctional rehabilitation. 
and so far I am on the track to graduate a semester early with like all those courses and requirements. A lot of it, as she said, double dips or even like in my case, triple dips where it'll go into like both my majors and my certificate at a time. So it's very easy to be on track and not have to worry about anything. Yeah, um, I like how we can build our degree based off of what um, interests us. Um, I want to go into law enforcement. So most of my classes have been about policing along with my minor forensic populations. Um, I, w I just wanted to learn about all the types of people that I may come in contact with while I'm a police officer. So I've taken classes like women in crime and gangs in crime and stuff like that. And it's kind of taught me um, how to talk to those certain kinds of people uh, when they need help and stuff like that. I didn't realize we had such amazing students here with us tonight doing all those things and graduating on time. That's wonderful. All thanks to you, Sue. <laughs> um, yeah, those are great, great examples. Students, maybe talk a little about what were some of your favorite courses you've taken in the program? So I'm going to go off and brag about Sue a little bit. So she taught legal issues in America and I took that my sophomore year and it was extremely interesting. Literally, as the title says, we talked about legal issues within courts and within laws and just studied that. And she really was able to teach that to um, all of us. And we got to work on a project where we had inmates versus correction officers and saw the problems within that and discussed different challenges that might arise and how, how to really find solutions. So that was a class that she taught that was very integrative where and interactive where you could really um, learn by being hands-on. Um, for me, be, uh, before I decided to major in criminal justice, I was only just psychology and thinking about minoring criminal justice. And my first class that I took was introduction to criminal justice. And that like changed my life with my professor. Like she got me into the research that I am. She got me into so many doors with different people I'm so grateful for that just like the professors in the criminal justice school are just amazing and want to be there for you and like want you to thrive so successfully so like I just have all my respect to criminal justice and like it's always going to be in my heart like that I love our program there's also a lot of fun classes within criminal justice like right now I'm in a criminal justice um, through film class just because I'm taking 18 credit hours and I wanted something that was kind of fun. Um, it's like a three hour class every Tuesday night, but our second week of class our professor like took us to the movie theater and we watched a movie like about um, criminal justice and stuff like that. And then like afterwards she took us to pizza and we like discussed the movie so it's really fun to like hang out with your professor like outside of a classroom setting but still learning and every week we all just like have debates and it's kind of cool to see criminal justice in like the media because you don't really think about it when you watch movies and stuff like that. But yeah definitely a lot of different courses you can see some of them described here but um, the one that I really liked was criminal justice statistics because even though I'm not a big math person. This was really cool because you, you're going to apply it in your work because um, stats is you know, really relevant within research and everything. So just the different classes, it's such a wide range and it's just really interesting how you get to pick and choose what you want to really study. Okay, great. Yeah, those are great, great examples. Uh, as this is kind of an example, another way of just showing you kind of how those courses are structured throughout the, the program. You even have those 10 hours of free electives that you can be thinking about how you might want to implement those and be strategic and how you can make yourself really look as marketable as possible. You know, getting the most out of a degree nowadays is something that a lot of students really strive for and take advantage of, especially in a program that's as flexible as this program. Um, so we'll definitely kind of come back to a few things and I want to transition to this next piece that's really going to help answer actually a question that just came up on, on our chat, chat box um, here for the event tonight. Uh, there's a lot of resources that are available to students um, and one of those primary resources is our academic advising center. Uh, these are the individuals that assist our students through obviously their class scheduling and 
all, knowing all the things that they, they need to know when it comes to making sure they're, they're going to be graduating on time. And so like one of the questions that came up and we'll let you students kind of talk about the role of an academic advisor, but you know, the big question is when and how or when, how do you talk to, who do you talk to about your classes? and figuring out what classes to take and what will work together for a double major or a minor. You know, that, that often can be confusing. How do you, how will you know, how, do, how, do, how can you even know that that would work out, right? So is some, the big question is, is someone involved throughout your four years to help you and to just really make sure you are on track? And, and really that's what these advisors do. But students, if you guys wanna talk a little bit about the role of the advisor and how they've assisted you through your program. So my advisor is Ethan, and he's in the red shirt, who is from the Star Trek. I don't know the character name, but he has literally guided me through every description on this PowerPoint. Um, I, could not, be not, I cannot be more thankful for him. Um, what he does, his role is really prevalent where, you know, if you have questions, he's always a resource for you. So class scheduling, you know, sometimes that can be overwhelming, not knowing where to, what to choose. And just having someone who understands the coursework, the course load, and you know what your goals are is really um, supportive. And he just helped guide me through everything from study abroad planning to career exploration and deciding what minors I wanted to do. And I've seen him probably twice every semester, just going in and having meetings and just making sure I'm on track. So this group is honestly the best advisors on campus. And I say this because, you know, they keep it consistent between students. They want to build that rapport and that relationship. And they are so amazing, honestly. So advisors are really helpful within college. And I always, you know, tell all their students to um, use them as a resource. I have Ethan as well. And I know not just with him, with everyone else, if you cannot meet with your advisor personally, they will either do a Zoom call or a phone call with you or just like try to email with you as best as possible to communicate with what you need help with. They really want to go like above and beyond for all of us. Um, they're even there just for like emotional support to check on you, everyone's mental health. Like with Ethan, like I'll just go in and talk to him if he's not doing anything and we talk about sea turtles because he loves them. Like that's how much they want to be there for you with educationally and personally. Yeah, I can agree with that. Um, my, or my advisor has always made me feel welcomed and comfortable. Um, I go in to see him probably, like Emily said, twice a semester. And whenever you email them, they always email within 24 hours and they are truly there to help you and they want to see you succeed. Thank you, guys. Thanks for sharing that information. So, hey, Tracy, great question at that time. That was perfect timing on that. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, academic advisors are obviously very important as students are just trying to figure out what they want to do and, and how they're able to obtain their goals uh, throughout the program. And they do work really well also with our faculty. You know, Sue has a great, I'm sure, has a great relationship with our academic advisors as well. Right, Sue? Oh, yeah. Uh, we talk all the time and have meetings and discuss things and work out problems for students all the time. Cool. So uh, next step here, I want to talk a little bit about campus life uh, and talking, obviously, so, so campus life right now obviously looks really different than, than what the students were or had expected it to look like right now. And so we are obviously adjusting and adapting to new ways um, for, for a lot of students. And, and unfortunately, we can't do this in person with all of you and, and talk to you in person, but um, still want to provide an opportunity for you to kind of gain some insight and learn a little bit what of what campus life will be like, especially when we're able to return uh, and students are back on campus. And so uh, students, maybe talk a little bit about what is campus life like for someone who is going to be living on campus uh, your first year, or I don't know if either of you, did all of you live on campus your first year? Or did anybody commute? I did. You commuted, Emily? Oh, I, I lived on campus. Oh, okay. Um, um, yeah. So yeah, maybe you guys can share a little bit about what that was like. You know, what dorm did you live in? What was the atmosphere like there? What did you do when you were on campus? That kind of thing. Yeah. So the thing for me is 
how I, the reason why I chose UC is because even though the population of students is so large, 45,000, it feels small, like a community, because of the amount of interaction with campus life. So um, there's plenty of ways to get involved. And just talking about dorms, I lived in a traditional dorm my first year, which just means I had a room that I shared with two other girls and there was a community bathroom. And I know this is not everyone's first choice on cleanliness, but I always encourage students to choose this because it really makes you go out of your comfort zone right off the bat and you meet so many people that way just to talk to them. Um, even if you like things clean, you know, they clean it every day. So I really think that this is the best way to start off college just to get the real experience. For me, I lived on campus um, my first and second year. Um, my first year I was in Turner and that is a sweet style. So I didn't have to share the bathroom. I lived with three other girls and we had like our own common areas. So it was our, our little living room. Um, we were very still social on, I know our floor personally, like we would go to all the rooms to just like talk to one another, like my neighbors, my one friend, she's such a good friend now. She would come and just like stay the night sometimes in our dorm. Like she was basically like our fifth roommate. That's how close we would get. Um, and then my second year I was in U Square, which is apartment style living. You still share bedrooms. Um, you have your own bathroom and kitchen. So it was like a little upgrade for me cause I'm, I'm like a germaphobe. So I went in my own bathroom. Um, and then the meal plans, I definitely recommend. I know for your first year, you get the unlimited. It's amazing. You can go as many times a day as you want, just within, I think, a 15 minute period. Um, breakfast at Center Court is the best. You got to get um, biscuits and gravy. Totally recommend. Food is pretty good. You're making me hungry. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, are either of you from, or how many of you are familiar with the different kind of dorm styles? Someone was curious about, you know, what, what are, what are the different dorm styles on campus? So you have traditional, which is like your normal of like, either you can have with one other person, or I think up to like three other people. And that's where you share like the community bathroom. And then you have suite style, which is, um, either two people or again the three people and you have your own bathroom and then some every building's different some have a common space and then some don't for traditional and um suite style and then apartment style is like you have your own apartment um majority of the buildings like they're all they're all finicky we have some that like you share a bedroom with one person or there's i know in um i think it's Morgan's they have like two one bedroom where you share with two people and then one bedroom that is a single and then if you do like the deacon you get all your own bedrooms so it's all just varies you kind of have to do your research on it mm -hmm. and it just depends on what you think is best for you traditional halls are typically more social in that aspect but then if you're looking for a little bit more quieter space and you know have fewer or I mean some can still be really interactive, but like Lauren said, she lived in a suite style, which is you have your own bathroom and then their apartment. So it really just depends on what you're looking for. But I always encourage students just to push their boundaries and go traditional. <laughs> and how, how many people live in a suite style? So suite style is typically four. It's two to a bedroom and there's usually two bedrooms and then a shared bathroom between the four. Is that what you had, Lauren? Yeah. So like, we had our two bedrooms next to each other and they would walk out into like our sink area of the bathroom and then we would have like our shower and toilet separated in two different rooms and then down our hall we had like our little living room gotcha so yeah and and all styles are open to to students so freshman year you could get any of those styles it's going to come down to availability of like you know and depending on when you actually apply for housing uh, some of that will, you know, play a factor into which dorm you're able to get. It's never uh, a guarantee, but there are also things that can pop up where, you know, at some point you can do a self-select tool where you, if you, if there was a space available in a different dorm that you preferred, you can always move yourself later. Um, and so another question was, what is the dorm choosing process? So do, do any of you kind of remember how that was for you when you were picking your dorms, um, what that was like? 
Yeah, so that depends on, like you said, application for that. And you get a setup time to go in and choose your dorm. And at that time, you can describe whether or not you have a chosen roommate or you're going random. And if you go random, there's a process where you fill out information about yourself so that they select a roommate towards your um, same requirements. But that process is they give you a time slot and then you sign up for it. At least that's what it was when I did it. And it's just important to do it as soon as possible because with the growing, incoming growing classes, it, it can fill up pretty fast. So it's just good to be aware of that. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> let's move on to the, go to the next one so we can make sure we get through everything. Uh, so go global, right? A lot of opportunities for students to diversify their experiences and explore international uh, trips and study abroad trips and things like that. And so you guys want to share a little bit about some of the opportunities, whether you're in criminal justice and uh, if you want to do a short term or a long term trip, uh, does anybody have any experience or examples of what students might be able to do with this? So with studying abroad at UC, there's a lot of different options. You can go on faculty-led trips, and these are typically over the breaks, like spring break or winter break. So they're a couple weeks. Um, Sue Burke is in this, is that you, Sue, in that picture yep, there? Yeah, that's me. Yeah. So in that's Scotland. Scotland. Yeah, so she takes a trip every year during spring break, and they go to Scotland and learn about the criminal justice system there because they started it really, and students get to explore that with her. Um, and that's a faculty-led trip. And then you can do sh longer ones as well. And that's what I did. So I went a semester abroad to Italy. And I did this. It, it wasn't an exchange, but um, it was a different program that UC International, which is our international supportive program, they work with you to decide what works best for you and what you want to do. So I went for a semester. I studied in Italy. And I saved all my free electives. For that time period. So I was over there taking classes that weren't criminal justice related, but they were my electives. So I was cooking Italian food. I was learning fashion because I was right by Milan and different things like that. So that was a really neat experience that I got to do my junior year of college. That sounds like fun. <laughs> when we go to Scotland, it's really fun. Um, we take about 16 students, two faculty members, and we go to um, uh, Edinburgh and we do lots of sightseeing, see the castles and visit the, the palace where the queen stays. Um, then we travel to Dundee and we visit a university where the professors talk about the criminal justice system in the United Kingdom. And we spend a day in Dundee and then we go to Glasgow for more sightseeing and we visit a prison. We spent three hours in a prison. We got to tour and talk to inmates while we were there. We spent a day in court. We visited a jail. We went visited the um, Scottish National Police Department. So um, students take a course called International Criminal Justice and study different countries for an entire semester. And then the semester um, as, as it's getting ready to close, we go to Scotland and actually see criminal justice in action over in uh, the United Kingdom in Scotland. So it's a wonderful trip. And like Emily said, to, st to spend a semester abroad is also a great experience. There are, um, I, I guess I'd call them humanitarian um, study abroad, where oftentimes the social work program, the nursing program, different programs, go to um, help people in other countries and our students can go on those too. Every October there's what we call the um, study abroad fair and everybody taking a, a study abroad, all the um, faculty and people doing the study abroads invite students to come and visit our table and we talk about our study abroads and students can kind of walk through, get information and decide on different kinds of study abroad. And we have a wonderful international office that helps with all of those um, programs. So it's really um, highly recommended that students do, you know, if they can or want to do a study abroad or, or do some kind of a, a different kind of internship that we were talking about before to put on the resume when you graduate. It all looks good. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Definitely take advantage of those opportunities. 
Uh, student organizations I'd like to touch base on this real quick. Uh, there's a lot of ways for students to get involved. You know, we have a few things within our own college with the Criminal Justice Society uh, that many of you are involved with, the CJ Honor Society, and our even own CCH ambassadors, which all of our students are involved with tonight. Uh, does anyone want to talk a little bit about your experiences with some of the organizations you've been involved with? Do you recommend anything? What is your advice when it comes to getting involved on campus through these organizations? Um, so I'm in Criminal Justice Society, which is led by Sue Burke. Um, I'm an officer for Criminal Justice Society. So um, the officers actually like put together the career fair, as she said earlier. So there's a group of, I don't know how many officers there are, probably like eight of us who contact employers um, throughout the year up until March and ask them to come to our career fair. Um, this like really helps you get connections. I got a lot of like personal emails and numbers from employers and got to meet with them personally. And it really like, you really stick out to them when you're the one like running the fair. Um, so that's a really good thing. And it's also really fun because we set up like prison trips and stuff like that. So you just get involved and, you, and it's e as easy as signing up on, um, Campus Link, I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Yeah, Campus Link. Yeah, so you just sign up for organizations on Campus Link, and there's hundreds of organizations that you can sign up for. So, yeah, the picture that is um, on the screen here is the career fair, and this happened, or not the career fair, sorry, the um, student organization fair. And it's one every semester where organizations come out and they promote their organization and you are able to join. So there are so many organizations from, like I think we have a milkshake club, like a, can a cheese club. club. There's so many, but one that I'm involved in is I'm on the tennis club. So this is not like varsity level, it's a little bit lower, but this way I can still practice what I really enjoyed in high school and do that in college. So with them, I travel to different states. I went to Wisconsin, Florida, pretty much all over the Midwest and played other universities in tennis. So that was something that was really fun. Yeah, we have the um, ski club and I think they take different ski trips in the winter. Uh, the scuba diving club, the mountain climbing club, um, just anything. Um, honor societies, but just a ton of wonderful organizations that students get involved in. And I highly recommend it because employers look at that when they are looking to hire people, you know, how involved students uh, were. Um, I know Emma has been with me to lunch a couple of times um, with employers and things, and they, they really like it that students are involved, that they take a leadership role and uh, get the experience of coordinating events and getting to know different people. And um, again, you know, getting out of your comfort zone to do something with other people. This is also a great way just to get more connected into the university, meet more people that, you know, you have things in common with. And another fun fact about EC organizations is that if they don't have a club you're interested in, you can start your own. So you just need 10 friends with the same interest and an advisor like our professor and you know you can start your own organization that EC will fund. So they definitely want to promote student campus life in any way they can. Okay, great. Um, and then kind of, we, we've obviously touched base on the experiential learning side uh, quite a bit, but I definitely wanted to provide one more opportunity just to kind of come back to this. And um, if anyone went, had anything else that they wanted to talk about when it comes to experiential learning, even beyond just internships, you know, how did this come into play when it came into some of your classes? Was anything hands-on that you appreciated? Um, and how has this really played a role for you in helping you really experience a program and getting as much hands-on experience as you can? For me, I was able to go on a ride along with um, one of the Columbus officers from where I'm from. And that was just a great thing to experience, just to see the other side of getting out of the classroom. And I had to see a lot of crazy things like I was first on scene for a car accident and just like 
you're going to see the paperwork process and just a daily a daily time in their lives like it was good to see it out of reading a textbook yeah absolutely we plan a lot of guest speakers um you know this year alone we had um five or six um, different guest speakers. Uh, we had one panel of guest speakers from uh, the private sector, the business sector. You know, we had loss prevention folks from um, TJ Maxx, Target, Luxottica, the eyeglass company. Um, and they all talked, and Kroger's, and they all talked about their different companies and, and job opportunities. We've had the ATF, we've had the FBI, we've had the Secret Service, we've had people from the prison system, uh, people from the parole board, just all kinds of uh, guest speakers so that students can see the variety of, of career paths and job opportunities. So, and they often, you know, invite us to take trips. We took um, a trip we've taken trips to a number of prisons. We've gone up to the Ohio State Highway Patrol Academy. Uh, we've gone through the jail, the Justice Center. So um, in our classes, we do a lot of experiential learning. Okay, great. Um, and so I want to make sure we have some time for answering some of the questions that um, is being posted on this chat box. And so I want to kind of go through and, and address some of the ones we haven't had a chance to, to answer. Um, one of those was, when do you find out who your advisor is? Um, I mean, I can answer this with students. When did you guys find out who your advisor was? I found out my advisor at orientation. Mm -hmm. So right off the bat, they came in at orientation and helped us schedule our classes. So your advisor is depending on your major and then your last name, that's how they categorize it. So Emma and I have both last names that start with an S. So we both have Ethan because he takes care of S's and so on. So that's how they choose advisors. Okay, cool. Did you have Ethan all four years? I did, yes. Yeah, so I there's a lot of consistency right. with advising. And that's my favorite part is because I didn't have to restart, you know, I had him and he knew exactly my goals and, you know, what I needed to accomplish. So that was really awesome. Um, another question uh, for students that might be thinking about our graduate program, does the master's, the criminal justice graduate program accept its own undergraduate students? Yeah, um, oh, go ahead. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, um, I can talk about this because I'm applying to it uh, next year, but they do. All you have to have is a 3.0 and a letter of recommendation. Um, and our master's program is really cool because you can actually get your master's in a year and it's all online. So you can work full time and get your master's, which is what I'm going to do. Yeah, we have a campus um, um, master's program and an online program so students can pick either one you know to come to class and get your master's or like uh, emma said take the master's online and the funding for this program is incredible because i know a lot of friends of mine who are funded 100 percent, and typically it's about 75 to 100 percent funding covered just depending on certain factors so it's really um, affordable with that and Lauren um, took the undergraduate research um, track, you know, or internship. So, you know, I guess, you know, she can talk about, you know, getting some experience that might help her deciding whether she wants to go to graduate school or not. Yeah, so with that program, it definitely has given me all the resources of how to apply to graduate school and how to like make each one of us stand out when we apply to them. Um, one of our requirements is we have to write a letter, cover letter of like any graduate program that we would want to apply to and we would insert like this is the professor I'd want to work with with research and explain little details and I feel very grateful for learning those things as a second year because one of I know my biggest worries was coming into undergrad was how am I going to get into graduate school and there's so many things that show you of like this is how you apply, here's help if you need it. So I'm very grateful for all the things UCE does for us. 
Yeah. Uh, another question is, is there, and I, I'm, I can answer some of this, but students, do you know, is there an LGBTQ presence in the UC community? Yes, there is. Um, I have gone to some organization events regarding that, and I believe there is a club that, you know, is involved within that. So there, there is a presence. The great thing about UC is that it's very diverse. Um, someone who I'm multiracial and, you know, have a different background and I come to UC and I, I see that diversity right away. So that's something that I really appreciate about it. Yeah, and I, I believe we even have our own LGBTQ office space um, right next to the uh, Ethnic Programs and Services Department as well, um, which is right on campus. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's from like the Student, student Wellness Center or Student Life Center or something yep, like Yeah, and Steger. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, another question here, what areas of interest uh, for criminal justice are offered at UC? And so um, try, I'm not sure exactly how to answer that question, but what, what are the areas of interest for students in criminal justice? So I don't know if we're thinking about careers here or not, and maybe um, that question can maybe be more elaborated on. Um, but students, possibly, what do you guys think? Yeah, possibly um, <clears throat> when I was talking about the different uh, courses that we offer, uh, we have different tracks, you know, um, for somebody that might be interested in policing or corrections or victimology or uh, the business sector, um, criminology, you know, we have a lot of courses that could offer different opportunities. Mm -hmm. Corbin, maybe that question is referring to like, if you touch base on, you know, the four sectors that we study. No, oh, yeah. Yeah, so like the, there's four key areas within the programs, which is criminal justice, criminology, corrections, and policing. So those are kind of like the four main areas within that program. So um, hopefully that answers that question there. Does anyone have anything to add to that? Well, cybersecurity, crime and intelligence analysis, you know, if people want to go that route, that's, you know, a pretty popular way to go anymore. And we offer those opportunities to those courses. Okay. Very good. So um, also a question I'd like to ask students, and this will give you some time if anyone else has any additional questions, feel free to post them. Uh, but students also, for those, um, for those students that are here that might be thinking about um, attending UC in the fall or even down the road, when you were looking into going to college, what was it about UC that made you, that kind of, you know, got you decide to enroll here? For me, um, I honestly, it was that diversity, which I touched about before. You know, I went, I went to a small private school my whole life and I didn't want to continue that. So just stepping on campus and seeing so many different people and different backgrounds, it was just that diversity and the opportunity that I saw here. With, um, for me, I really wanted to get away from home, but not too far away. I definitely wanted to be in a city and when I first came on Cincinnati's campus as cheesy as it sounds I got butterflies in my stomach because I just love the atmosphere. I love how we have the city but it also feels like a home. Like campus is big but it's also very tiny like you can get across it in 15 minutes like the most. Um, there's so many different opportunities and the programs are amazing we're very research-based and I like that. That's research was one of my main interests that I wanted to get involved with. If you want it, like we probably have it and that's what the great thing about UC is. Um, I chose UC just because there's just so much to do on and off campus. Um, like we have a movie theater on campus and a ton of restaurants, um, stuff like that. So you don't have to go very far to find something to do and it's very big, so you're going to make friends just because of how many people are here. And then downtown's literally only like a 10-minute drive, so you can go to like Reds games and Bengals games. Um, you can go to the zoo. I actually like can walk to the zoo from my apartment, and a lot of places have like discounted tickets for UC students. Like all you have to do is just go online and like type in that you're a UC student and you can buy like discounted tickets. So there's, you're always going to find something to do 
and to get to places like down our and night rides can actually take you there so you don't even have to pay for it. Great, great. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for um, for those answers and sharing that information. Uh, so I'd like to put up our social media here. If you wanna follow us on any of our other additional channels we have going on with Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. Uh, in addition to Facebook, those are our accounts. So feel free to check them out, follow us and see what we have going on in our college. Uh, I have my phone and email there. So if you have any questions later, feel free to jot those down, email me at any time. Uh, if you wanna get connected with anybody uh, that was here for the event with our students or with Professor Burke, uh, let me know. I'll be happy to connect you with them if you wanted to get some more information or just speak with them about the program. They'd be more than happy to talk to you and visit with you um, over the phone. Um, one question that came in for you for y'all is would you recommend having a car on campus? So you don't really need it. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. You don't really need it. There's <laughs> ways to get around and like Emma said, there's night rides. So this is something that kind of like a free Uber that UC has and they drive you to different locations off campus. And there's just so much to do on campus and then it's really accessible to get off campus that you don't really need one. The only time where I hear students really needing it is if they live like in Cleveland and really far away and their parents don't want to drive them everywhere or, you know, to and from all the time. But typically for, especially for your first year, you really don't need a car. Um, it's just extra stuff to have, so. There's also um, a few other things like you don't need your car. Um, we have like, I think it's called Zip Ride, and they have like two little parking spaces and that's where like you run out the car and like you can just drive it to like Kroger if you have like a big load of groceries and like drive it back. Um, there's another thing where we have like an online group community where it's saying like, hey, I'm going to Cleveland or Columbus and someone who does have a car, you can carpool and they can drop you off, say, if you need to go in Columbus or wherever you need to be, that works best with them. And there's different things where you can meet up so you feel safe and comfortable. And it's only to UC students. Yeah, I had a car in my first year and I kind of regret paying for the parking garage just because I didn't use it. Really, the only time I used it was when people found out that I had a car and they're like, oh my gosh, can you drive me here? And <laughs> I like was like too nice to say no. So that was really the only time I used it, which is also a really annoying thing. If you do bring your car, don't don't let anybody know you have it because you will be driving people everywhere. <laughs> That's fine. So yeah, Amy, if you have a car, don't tell anybody. Um, everyone wants you to drive them everywhere. <laughs> that is true. I did use my friend for her car, so. That's funny. Uh, and this is actually a good question. Another, another question uh, she asked, are animals like therapy dogs allowed on campus or in the dorms? I can answer this. Um, I have two emotional support rabbits. Um, it's a very easy process with dogs. Um, they still don't let you in the dorms, but if it's like a little animal, they will. Um, it just depends on what you need. That's the Office of Accessibility Resources that you would go to and you would work with them and show them the professional letter from like your doctor, whoever it is, saying that you need this animal to live with you. Um, they just have to stay in your room with you unless like you're going back home. That's the only time that they're allowed coming out. Um, they're very flexible with working with you and very understanding and want to have like the best treatment that you can with that because they get it yeah and it, it feels like we have a lot of therapy dogs on campus with that one uh was it four paws is that what it's called yeah, it's yeah. So, so someone want to explain what that group is yeah so four paws is an organization on campus and students get to raise foster dogs and these dogs are used then and um provided to people with disabilities and yeah so you see these dogs around campus and students are fostering them and teaching them how to be a therapy dog so that's really cool because when you have a stressful day you see you know a, bit, a puppy on campus and you get to pet it so it's nice yeah so definitely um i'd say they're definitely a common occurrence on campus with that group and then anyone that might just need one individually as well they're definitely around 
Um, yeah, hey, great, great questions. Really appreciate the the interaction and the questions that are coming in. Um, and if you if anyone has any additional questions, we'll be happy to take them. I know we're kind of coming to an end here, um, but I want to thank everybody for for being here and for those of you that are attending and, and considering UC as a potential place to come. Uh, we are just really thrilled and excited that you're considering us and hopefully you got a little bit of the taste of like the family, the family atmosphere that is our college and in our program with with Sue, our program coordinator and I don't know where they, they call you, but they basically dubbed you the program mom or yeah. you know, that, <laughs> or, uh, They have a dean you know. that cooks for us all the time, you know, barbecues and spaghetti and chili and yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, we're we are. Uh, it's great to have be an atmosphere where everyone's really just here for you to assist you and, and be here for you. So, um, if there is anything that we can do for you as you're thinking about anything or have any additional questions, don't hesitate to reach out. We're here to help in whatever way we can. Uh, and definitely thank you. So all of you students, Emily, Lauren, Emma, uh, and Professor Burke, thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, and if you guys want to go ahead, feel free. You know, have you all, if you want to turn your videos on and say goodbye to everybody. Bye. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Have a great evening. Everyone. Everyone. Everyone's muted. Bye. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks, y'all. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. Um, and again, if you have any additional questions you didn't get answered or, or you had a, you think of something later, feel free to email me uh, and we'll be happy to address any questions you have at any time. But thank you so much for being here. Y'all stay safe and stay healthy. Bye, Sue. I miss you. I miss you guys. <laughs> have a good summer. Yeah, you too. You too. Thank you. Yeah. Right, do we Hopefully just we can go to Target soon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys have a good evening. <laughs>